Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel, I'm Magda and today we're going to talk about pros and cons of working at European Investment Bank as a trainee. So let's get started. As you may know from my previous videos, I used to work at European Investment Bank, EIB, as a trainee in one of the team in Financial Directory. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what are the good parts of it, what are not good parts of it. So basically advantages and disadvantages of doing traineeship in European Investment Bank. Let's start with, in my opinion, most important pro, which is good part of your CV. So basically European Investment Bank is an institution that is worldwide known. If not worldwide, everybody in Europe will know it. And they know that they have high standards. They know that it's very competitive to get in. So if you got in for a traineeship to EIB, your future employer will know that you are a good person, that you are someone who is determined, who has their goals, who is willing to learn and who is interested in the topic that you chose and also that you won the competition between all the other people because there are so many people who apply for the position that you were the chosen one and the question is why you were chosen you were chosen because you are the best one it might be because of your knowledge because what you studied what you did before as other traineeships or projects or senior organizations or any other stuff that you've done during your university years it can be your character your way of thinking your abilities to work in a group your abilities to i don't know code or knowledge of the law or interest in i don't know sustainable finance on some specific policies so you will be chosen one because of something that someone saw in you, so all the future companies will know that you are worth it. So in my opinion, working in EIB is such a good highlight in your CV that it's very, very worth it to do your traineeship exactly in that place. Now let's go to one of the biggest possible cons of most of the people, which is moving to Luxembourg. So EIB has their headquarters in Luxembourg. You may know from my previous videos that most of the offers for traineeships are in Luxembourg. There are around 60 people coming every semester, which means twice a year, so 120 people a year that come as a trainees to European Investment Bank. However, about 50 of them comes to Luxembourg. So 10 others go to bigger cities, normally capitals of other countries in Europe. However, there are only one trainees in this specific spot, which is even harder to get to. So your possibilities to get to to European Investment Bank outside of Luxembourg are much lower. And let's be truth, Luxembourg is not a place which is advertised as the most interesting place to be in. I try to advertise it on my YouTube channel as one of the best places to live for young people who start their career, who want to develop and grow. But I know that it's not for everyone. It's not south of Spain or south of Italy when it's nice and warm. It's not a place where you're going to never see rain or you're going to have low cost of living or you're going to be able to, I don't know, go to the sea or high mountains because we just don't have it here. However, there are much more pros of living in Luxembourg, which is like competitive wages, nice career path, many places to work in. Wherever you start, you're going to be able to change the job relatively easily and grow your career. Um, other things, what I can tell you, it's great for families, it's great for young people if you like Erasmus vibes. However, it's a small city as well, so there are pros and cons of the city in other videos, you can check them out. However, yes, you will most probably have to move to Luxembourg. Another pro that it's nice is that it's a paid traineeship. So if you are from countries like Spain, Italy, probably Germany, I don't know how it's in France, but many countries in Europe actually traineeships are either not paid at all or the rate for traineeships, internships, or I don't know, stage years or however you can call it, they are quite low. So what happens? You still have to ask your parents for money. You still have to ask someone to be able to survive. In Luxembourg, in EIB, you are paid 1,500 euro a month. This is net and you will be able to survive with this money, even if your flat will be up to 900 or 1,000 a month. With this 500 euro, you will be able to survive with your food, with your social life. So I mean, going out for a beer a few times a week or something like this. Maybe not going out to a restaurant, but you will be able to do whatever you need. And I would say that it's enough to survive. I survived and many of my friends did. So don't worry, this is the money that you will be able to survive. But continuing kind of your student life, how to say it, like student life approach. Uh, so, you know nothing super crazy in a way going out to the restaurant every single week or i don't know crazy travels without thinking about a budget big con of eib is a long paperwork and long application period so basically you apply around three four months before your traineeship will start and for this three four months you may not know up to i would say i started in september i applied in may I had my interviews in June and I had my information that I'm accepted in half of July. 
So if you're graduating in July or in September, super cool, you don't have a big gap. But imagine that you graduate in March and you didn't get into the February, March or March, April, I never remember, intake, then uh, you have to wait for a long time. Also, the moment you apply to the moment you get the decision is almost two months. So for two months, you are just waiting. You just don't know if you should apply for something else, which job you should choose and whatsoever. You don't have strictly set the deadline when you're going to be said. If you got applied, I got said in the middle of July and it was about a week after a person I had an interview with told me that it's going to be because they told me around 7th of July and I'm pretty sure I got 14th or 15th of July the information. So you can always ask on your interview. However, be prepared that uh, it might be a little bit later. I would not expect anything later than July. Uh, maybe unless you were like a second choice and someone didn't decide to. So, you know, they had to wait for the information from the other person. Then they have to come back to you whatsoever, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's always longer. But then even if you get the information to the moment you get your contract, to the moment that you're actually, you know, fully aware that it's going to be moving and whatsoever, it takes another time. So... EIB is always full of paperwork and it's always take a long, 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 long time. So it's a huge con of this institution. Big advantage of EIB is having different departments, which are not always strictly related to finance or economics. There is also law. There are availability for anyone who did business related topics. So I don't know, international business or uh, international relations, law, administration, finance, economics. IT, what else? They are actually engineers. Uh, you can do project management. You can do some type of more financial transaction management or portfolio stuff. You can go to sustainable finance. You can do really, really a lot of different stuff at EIB. And I think that it's a great opportunity for young people to check out what they like, if they like what they think. It's only five months. You can always change your mind. You don't have to stay and you may go totally opposite direction. And also you check out how is it to work in public institution and how is it to work in European institution, which they have their a little bit of different things going on as well. As I mentioned, the uh, last advantage, there is also a disadvantage. It's very difficult to stay after your traineeship in European investment bank. What do I mean by it? I mean that it's very difficult to be extended and also it's very difficult to become a graduate, which is kind of like a junior position just because there are not so many graduates. There are not so many positions. I know around five people, I would say, who stayed after my traineeship. Obviously, I didn't know every single person who was with me at trainee, but in my intake, I think five or six people stayed. And I would say there were many more people who wanted to stay, including me. I did apply for the graduate position that was totally outside of my directory. I, it was in risk management, which I never had like contact with. They, in the end, took a person, she had more experience than me, doesn't matter, but basically it's not that easy to find a, find a position and also they will not create position for you, not always. There are some situations that you are a super good trainee and they will fight for the graduate position for you, however, it's not that easy, you still have to apply for the position, you still have to go through the process, there still can be a better person than you, so, so yeah, it's quite difficult to stay in European investment banks, so I would say be sure that you're going to be here for five, six months, sometimes six, but let's say five months. And after that, I can assure you that if you want to, you will find a job in Luxembourg, but it may not be necessary in European investment bank or European institution. What comes with uh, different directories and different fields you can work in, it's that you can actually study different stuff to get into European investment bank, which is, in my opinion, a bit big advantage of this place. Another thing that is very nice is that you can still be a student. So you don't have to necessarily graduate. The only problem is that you cannot follow your classes because you work eight hours a day. So they will not allow you to, you know, uh, just turn off your com work computer at, I don't know, 10 a.m. because you have a two-hour class that you have to attend. Not really. You can ask for special days to write the exam or to graduate. They will give you the special days, but I don't know how much like how many limits there are about it. It was much easier earlier when you could work from home from abroad when there was COVID. I don't think it's any more possible. Maybe there are some exceptions, but it's not that easy. So be aware that being still a student means that you can be a student, you can do your exams, you can write your thesis, you can do whatever you want. However, be aware that you will work just 40 or sometimes even more hours a week and you're going to be physically, probably physically in the office. So, yeah, so be aware of it that you will not have time to write your thesis and study properly like I mean, you will have time but you will miss out from like going out or i don't know weekends and whatsoever uh so yeah. so it's a big pro but at the same time a little bit of a con 
of working at EIB as a student, but it's possible. And for graduates, you can graduate and you just have a limit of, you cannot have more than 12 months of professional experience. However, they can lift it. And also, I don't know how the internships are counting. So sometimes internship is not counted. So yeah, it's actually quite flexible. Now, quite important con that can be a problem for some people is that you may not have super young team. So be prepared that your team may have the average age of 40 years old and you may be the youngest person and you may not have anybody in your team who is under 35, I would say under 40 sometimes. So be prepared for it. Normally teams are quite big. My team was around 10 people. I know people who have team about 20 people. So yeah, I would say 10 is average, but you may have people who are 40 plus plus you. So that might be a struggle for some people. I was lucky enough to have a 28 year old colleague, but most of my team was around 40, 50, instead of two other people who were also around 30 something. But yeah, 28 year old was perfect fit for me. However, don't be surprised if you will not have anybody who is young in your team or only one person who is young and the rest of the team would be much older, but take it as a good thing as well because they will have much more experience both in life and at work. They will be more helpful and you are super nice people. The thing that I was very surprised in EIB is that everybody was so respectful for each other. It doesn't matter if you're head of division or a director, or if you are a trainee, you are always treated with respect and no one looks down at you. No one thinks that you are just a stupid trainee, which for me was a very great experience. And I didn't hear from anyone that anybody was feeling bad in EIB as a trainee. Very nice part of working in EIB. As I mentioned earlier, you have a lot of trainees. And on the top of trainees, you have graduates. They are all people who are around 20 years old, like 20, 25, 28, whatever. And they all came here. Probably they came recently they don't have a lot of friends you don't have a lot of friends you go out with them and you make friends instead of meeting people from your team you will meet all the other trainees you will not have problem to meet other graduates by meeting all these people you will meet other people from european institutions you will see where people hang out and you will meet many many young people and this is very easy to achieve in a company like this and in an institution that has a lot of trainees you by default have already 50 people from which you can choose I can tell you that at the beginning I was hanging out in around group of 10, 15 people who were trainees. Some of them still stayed here. I still have contact with them. Some of them, the contact after one month was not needed in a way we didn't get to know each other too well. We didn't make friends, but then you meet graduates, then you meet someone else, then someone is a flatmate of someone or friend of someone, and then you make a group of friends. And it's much easier to do in a European institution like a European investment bank where you have already 50, 60 trainees who you can meet. Then when you come and you're the only trainee in a company or one of few trainees. So, so this is a, was a great advantage for me that you meet a lot of people, but not only young people, but as well as I mentioned earlier, you can meet a lot of people with experience who can share their uh, knowledge. I was approached by a few people also from Poland who were trying to give me their perspective on what is going on. I was approached by a director to, who tried to give me a little bit of the point of view, what to do in my life, how to approach my career and stuff like this. And people are very helpful. So trust me, you will meet many people on obviously if you want to, but if you want to, you will. One of the things that was annoying for me might not be for you, but I personally don't speak French and so many people speak French in European investment bank. This is the language that's actually required from the officer level. You are required to have, I think, B2 of French. You are required to be able to communicate in French. You probably will not work in French unless it's your work is strictly like uh, related to French, but it will be required when you enter the work. However, a lot of people between each other, they will speak in French. You will meet a lot of people who will even speak in English. They will like <laughs> put some words in French inside phrases, all the stuff in EIB. I mean, all the people who are working, for example, in Cantine or all the people who are working as a security or in the entrance or whatever, they will speak only French. They will greet you every single day in French. And it's super nice as well. It's a French speaking country, so I totally understand it, but be prepared for it that French might be an obstacle. One of the things that surprised me positively about European Investment Bank instead of the salary was also that they gave you all the costs of your arrival back. So whatever, actually arrival and departure, but I stayed, so no departure for me. However, the arrival cost, they were paid back. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, with a huge delay, I got my money back in like November and I came in September. I filed my documents about like first week of September, but uh, this is the paperwork of EIB, as I mentioned, as a huge con. However, the big pro is that they will give you back money. They know that you relocate from totally opposite side of the Europe, uh, probably you're not from France, even if you're from France, I mean, you still have to arrive. So yeah, so for example, they gave back all my costs for my flights. I could get as many luggage as I want to and it was actually super nice for me that they did so. So uh, I think that it's a big pro 
for, for coming here. Also, because other European institutions have limits of 250 euro, EIB doesn't have this limit. So it's super nice, mostly for students, because mostly it's students are recent graduates, so you don't have money. You kind of have to pull out all the money to give to your flat. You have to pull out the money to arrive to Luxembourg, to move here. And then finally, it will some of it will come back to you. A big con, but it obviously depends where you go. Sometimes, and you will hear it from many European institutions, trainees, sometimes your work may be boring. And what I mean by boring is because maybe there is some project that you're not good enough to, to go with. People have deadlines. They don't have time to explain you stuff. They don't have time to give you stuff. And you just may sit there and just, you know, do nothing. In my opinion, do nothing is not a good idea. Just try to, I don't know, read about European Investment Bank or read about stuff that you can do. Maybe take some courses if you are still studying. Just study. Nobody will say anything bad to you. If you want to do CFA or any other exam, go for it as well. Study during a working hour. Just don't stay on your phone or don't, I don't know, come hang over to work or something like this just because you know you have nothing to do. Be respectful to everyone. Uh, take some courses. There are so many online courses. Go for it. But yeah, don't be surprised if there are days that you're going to be bored. Me, personally, I was mostly not bored. There were obviously some days that I had nothing to do, but because my teammates were super busy and they just didn't have time for me to give me anything. However, I was quite busy. I know a few people who were mostly not busy. They had about a few hours to do, like half of the day to do stuff. And then the other half, they would not do anything. But if you're smart enough, you will figure it out yourself to do something profitable for you, as I mentioned, courses, uh, studying or whatever. If we spoke about this, let's finish this video with a big pro which is working hours. Working hours are not crazy. Work-life balance in Luxembourg overall is very nicely respected in European Investment Bank even more. I would say it all depends on you how much you will respect your time, but you can do a usual nine to five job or how it actually is nine to six job because one hour is lunch that you should subtract, but you have normal life and you are able to go out. You don't get out of work super tired without energy to do anything at 8, 9 p.m. No, you normally go out in normal hours. So yeah, it's quite nice. And I think European institutions are like top of the top on this task in Luxembourg, even if Luxembourg itself, it's quite good with work-life balance. So yeah, that would be it. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. I will be more than happy to answer them. Let me know as well where you're from and if you applied for any positions at EIB. And if you enjoyed this video and if you find it helpful, please leave the like button. That helps me a lot with the YouTube algorithm so this video will reach more people. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to my channel. I talk a lot about studying abroad, Luxembourg, my life here and overall traveling. So if you enjoyed this type of topics and you don't want to miss any of my future videos, subscribe to my channel. And here I leave you the video about how to apply for traineeships in EIB and the Luxembourgish playlist. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you in another video.